Okay, a concept that baffles a lot of students is why we draw the marginal cost curve to cut the average cost curve at its lowest point here. Why does that actually occur? Well, to explain, I'm going to use the concept of exam results. Now, you're a student. Um, let's assume that you have sat 100 exam papers already and that your average score from those 100 exams is 70%. Right, let's now look at marginal and average effects. Ignore the cost at the moment, okay, we're just going to keep things generic. I'm just talk about marginal and average very generically. Let's assume that in your um, 101st exam paper, you score 31%. Okay, that's your marginal score, 31%. Alright, now that's a long way below your average. Okay, so your average is going to fall by a long way. Right. Let's say your next exam paper, your 102nd paper, you score 30%. Right, well that's a marginal decrease, isn't it? Okay, the marginal decrease is by 1%, which takes you to 30%. So maybe that started you here at 31% to then ending up at 30%, which is down here. Okay, so as the marginal has fallen, okay, from 31 to 30%, your average has also fallen. Okay, it's a long way below 70% as well, okay, which means it falls very, very steeply. Okay, that seems to make sense. If every time you're scoring less than the average, your average is going to fall. Fair enough. But now look, okay, let's say that our 103rd paper, you score 40% on it. Now that's a marginal increase from 30% where my finger is to let's say we get 40%, a marginal increase of 10%. Now, think about what happens to your average after your first two papers. Okay, after the 31% and 30% scores you get, your average is going to fall maybe to the mid-60s, let's say. Okay, so it ends up at 65%. Now, even though you've had a marginal increase for your 103rd paper of 40%, that 40% score is still a long way less than 65%. So the average is still going to fall even though your marginal has increased. All right? Your marginal score is still less than the average, so your average falls. Less steeply because we're getting closer to the average, but it's still below the average that it falls. Keep going. So let's say on your 104th paper you score 59%. Well, your average after this score will still fall, let's say it's 62%. All right. So you scoring 59% is still below the average, but close to the average. So the average is going to fall less steeply. It becomes a little bit flatter, but still falling. Okay, so 59% maybe is over there. The average is slightly above, so it falls more slowly. All right. The key thing to take away there is even if the marginal is decreasing, or if the marginal is increasing, as long as the marginal effect is less than the average, the average will always fall. Okay? Key thing to take away from that. Similarly, let's go the other way. Okay, let's go back to the start and let's say that your 101st paper got you a score of 71% and that your 102nd paper got you a score of 84%. Right, your marginal exam, which is the 101st one, you scored 71 percent Well, that marginal score is slightly more than the average of 70. Just slightly more. Okay? But more than the average is going to pull the average up very, very slightly. Okay? And then your next paper, there's a marginal increase of 13 percent there. Okay? You've really increased a lot to 84 percent, maybe all the way over here. Well, that's a big increase, and that's really going to bolster your average quite a lot. So your average will increase very quickly. Okay? So again, if you're marginal score is more than the average, your average will rise. It makes logical sense. Let's just write those two rules down. Well, let's say here, if the marginal effect, or just the marginal, is less than the average, okay, the average will fall. Whereas if the marginal effect is greater than the average, the average will rise. Okay. Those two laws are indisputable, and hopefully they make logical sense after that. Well, given that those two are the case, the only place the marginal cost curve can cut the average cost curve is where the average cost curve is not rising, it's not sloping upwards or sloping downwards. It can't be rising or falling. And the only place that happens is when it's flat, okay, when there's no gradient to it. And that point is at the very bottom of the curve. So the marginal cost curve, for it to be equal to it, must cut at the lowest point. At that point, the marginal is neither below nor above the average cost curve. 
therefore the average cost gradient is zero. Okay? So using these two laws, the only place the marginal cost curve can cut the average cost curve is at its lowest point. If you want to fully understand that, well try drawing the marginal cost curves either side of it. Try drawing the marginal cost curve cut at different points, and you'll see one of these two points, maybe even well, certainly one of these two points will be neglected and you'll go against one of these laws, which will prove to you that actually that can't make any sense. All right? But very briefly, that's why the MC cuts the AC at the lowest point. I hope now that, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you.